While traveling the wasteland, the player may come by a cave. This is a random encounter, where the player can decide to investigate the location. The cave hides a canteen, two boxes of nails, and some wires. There is also a skeleton of a man lying on the floor, clutching a diary which reads as follows. January 19th, 2003 The reason why this diary came to life is so stupid. I feel rather awkward to talk about it, really. However, taking into account the suspicious events of the past few days, I feel it is necessary to do so. Exactly two weeks ago I was passing through Krasnoznamenny. I was planning to sell a couple wire rolls and buy some food, which I did. But as I was going to step out of the city walls, a crowd of gypsies surrounded me. An old gypsy woman, clearly the leader, offered to tell my fortune. And next thing, I knew she was studying my hand with a faint interest. I expected traditional a lot of happiness, a sea of pain, and then the demand to pay for the prediction, but what happened next came as a surprise. She let go of my hand and stared me in the eyes, frightened for some reason. He's following you, she whispered. I wondered who was following me, but the old woman didn't give me time to inquire. Watch the skies! She screamed and disappeared with her cronies, who went very quiet suddenly. To be honest, I was puzzled. Not so much by her prediction, but rather by the fact they hadn't stolen anything from me. I stood there for a while, and having decided at last all of this must be nothing, but stupid superstitions of stupid people, I went on. But her words about someone following me were now imprinted in my memory. I had trouble going to sleep that night. The thought that I was being watched bothered me, and the clear winter sky I could see from the window brought back her warning. Watch the skies. I was still nervous in the morning. My head was full of obsessive, frightening thoughts. From time to time I would look around or check on the sky, as if expecting it to change somehow. Everything looked just as usual, but then a thought crawled into my mind that it seemed fake. As if curtain fell from my eyes after what the old gypsy woman had said, and I started seeing some wrongness in the world around. I thought I was going mad. The stresses of life finally turned me into a paranoic or a schizophrenic or both. But then something happened today that gave weight to my vague suspicions. I noticed someone in the corner of my eye far away. He was clearly following me. The silhouette was human, but I couldn't make out the details. Anyway, this was enough, if not to disperse the thought that I was going crazy then at least to start exploring other options. So now I am sitting in front of the fire, looking at the starry skies and writing my thoughts down. May my diary be my ally, if I am really losing my mind or if there's really someone watching me. February 3rd, 2003 I'm leaving a note here again, just a little addition to the first one. It is very important. I'm really being watched. I've noticed a dark figure looming on the horizon more than once. Still, every time I move in his direction to check, the bastard disappears. But I know I saw him. I think I should set snares and traps around. I have couple theories about who it might be. The first and also the most probable one is that it's the gypsies playing some kind of a game with me. I don't really understand what it is they are after. Maybe at some point they will turn up with some magical talisman, protection from evil spirits, 
or some other anti-scientific trinket. If this is their plan, they have chosen the wrong person. These ridiculous tales won't scare me. If they bring their magical shit to me, I swear I will open fire. My second theory is that someone's planning to mug me. This too is possible. In any case, I think the traps will not be out of place. By the way, I cast a glance at the sky now every time before going to sleep. And there is something about it. As if it changes all the time. It looks different every night. February 5th, 2003 Today I've found another proof I was watched. I was checking the traps and found a scrap of fabric in one of them. It seems woolen, painted black. The scrap I got had a golden star embroidered upon it. I couldn't understand what item of clothes it was torn off. Trousers, a jacket, a coat, perhaps even a raincoat. What matters is that someone's been loafing around too close to my camp. In other news, rabbits got trapped in two of the snares. Not bad. February 17th, 2003 My phantom follower hasn't shown his face for almost a month, and I all but forgot about the diary. But this night I had to get down to it again. At first I thought it was a wounded animal's wailing that woke me up. But as soon as I got my bearings, I realized the ear-piercing sound that had made me jump in cold sweat has something unnatural about it. An animal's howl is full of pain, fear and anxiety. This however sounded blank, emotionless, like a signal. Or a siren. People say in ancient Greece sirens lured seamen to rocks. Perhaps he wants to make me leave the camp? I think I was right about his guilty intent. But they've chosen the wrong guy. I know a thing or two myself. March 20th, 2003 It's night again. I was woken up by the rattling squeak again. I armed myself and crawled to the camp's border. No one. Then suddenly there was rustling of the leaves under the feet of someone invisible. Someone running right at me from the underwood. In the quiet of the night it sounded deafening. I rushed back to the camp, barely managing to cling to my only means of protection against this bugger and his gang. I was running for about two minutes when I realized there was nobody following me. So they weren't going to mug me? What the hell are they after? What does this black bastard want from me? The days are still too short to go in search of the gypsies who foretold my fortune. And they must have long since left these lands. I need to collect myself. March 23rd, 2003 The third night passed quickly. I had no dreams. I had no sensation of time. It felt as if I just lay down and switched off for seven hours. In the morning I did some household chores. I extracted a young roe from the trap. There were no traces of human presence around the camp. They must have decided to be more careful after the last encounter. March 24th, 2003 I was studying the skies all night. I might not have trusted what I saw before, writing my findings off as pure coincidence or tricks of the eye. But now it's obvious it's all true. The stars are going out. I couldn't locate the dimmest star in the Great Bear. Sagittarius' string has thinned visibly. What's going on? March 25th, 2003 I have an idea, or rather a hypothesis. What if the end of the world is not just an expression? What if the phrase we used to call the outcome of the Great War is literal, made up by adding its constituents. 
a rueful prophecy like the one of the gypsy, but on a global scale. What if it's not my personal follower, clad in black, the leader of a criminal gang, but a metaphor for the darkness thickening over the world? What if the bombs fell and killed the light? And now the darkness is shrouding us every night thicker and thicker. There are ever fewer stars in the sky. It's all but gone out. Unknown date. Don't be scared of the sky. Don't worry. Don't run from me. Don't be scared of the sky. Don't worry. Don't run from me. Don't be scared of the sky. Don't worry. Don't run from me. Don't be scared of the sky. Don't worry. Don't run from me. March 28th, 2003. It is nonsense. Nonsense. But it's true. Or is it? Yes, it is. My senses can't lie. My memory can't deceive me. I slept like a log last night. Emaciated after watching the blackening sky. It wasn't me who left the latest note. It wasn't me who wrote those nonsensical words about the sky. Geez, it's not even my handwriting. Who was it? Someone sneaked into my camp. It's not safe anymore. I can't stop shaking. Every time I think about him sneaking around, the black figure sent by the gypsies. What gypsies? What do the gypsies have to do with it? He leaned over my sleeping body. He rummaged through my belongings. He breathed at me. He wrote in my diary, Leave me alone. What do you want? March 30th, 2003 I decided not to wait till morning. I hear footsteps around the camp. He wants to get in again to continue writing in my diary. So I fled with all the stuff I could carry in the early hours of the morning. I moved to a cave not too far from my bivouac. It's good here, deep and safe. Just one exit, just one entrance. Easy to guard. Don't have to be scared. April 1st, 2003 If only the cave entrance didn't open up to the sky. I wouldn't know. I would be calmer, less anxious about myself and my future. But I see it. The last stars are leaving the sky. It's pitch dark. There is no hope anymore. April 13th, 2003 No supplies. Just some water in the flask. I'm afraid to go out and check the snares. He won't let me go outside. He scuffs in the fallen leaves at the entrance. As soon as I come close to the entrance, he jumps up and starts shrieking. He never sleeps. He is always there at the threshold, waiting. The same color as the dead sky, invisible. April 16th, 2003 He is here. This is where the diary ends. However, we can attempt to learn more information about this tragedy from the gypsy fortune teller in Krasnoznameni. She does not seem to be old enough to be the old gypsy woman mentioned in the diary, but she might point us in her direction or at least tell us extra details about the dead man's story. And indeed, if the player has at least 7 points in personality attribute, Sarah, the fortune teller, will share what she knows of the dark events of 2003. All the player needs to do is ask her, Listen, Sarah, do you know anything about the curse of the blackening sky? Do you mean the prophecy? Look at the sky. Yes, yes, that's the one. I read about it in one old journal. Yes, an old gypsy gave it to one poor passerby. I think, in around 2003-ish. It all fits. Do you know anything about it? No. It's the first time I'm hearing about it. Oh, come on. You definitely know something. 
Ah, what should I do with you, Baro? You're a blabbermouth, I can see you are. All right, I'll tell you what I know. But I'm warning you beforehand, I don't know much. In 2003, my relatives visited me. The whole family came, led by my aunt Ratori. We partied good the first few days. So good, we ran out of money. So the old Ratori decided to make some money by her fortune telling. Yeah, so that's how they met that weird man. No sooner did Aunt Ratori look at him than she turned pale. Later she said his aura was somewhat strange, and right above his head, high in the sky, it seemed there was a black cloud, or a sifter. That man died later on. The gypsy shakes her head worryingly. Just like my aunt, she too died in just seven months. Sure, she was old, but not many people in their old age hide in the cellar and refuse to come out just before dying. And even fewer die with such horror on their faces. Although I wasn't there, I didn't see it myself, but that's how my relatives described her. Mouth open, eyes popping out of their sockets. A scary thing, Faro. Scary and inexplicable. Right. That's right, handsome, there's no need to raise this subject. There's something wrong in this story. Something evil. I'll go now, take my mind off this story. Bye. This was everything I managed to learn about the curse of the blackening sky. Sadly, I do not have the possessed trait on this character, so I do not know whether there is more lore to be glimpsed here or whether possessed does not affect this particular encounter. However, one thing is certain. The paranormal appears to be actual part of the Atom RPG Wastelands reality. What do you think about this piece of in-game lore? What do you think was the inspiration behind it? Please let me know in the comments below. The first thing that came to my mind was movie The Ring and the look of utter terror on the faces of people who succumbed to that particular curse. Either way, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.